Welcome to CoreLogic's housing market update for May 2023. It's looking increasingly likely that Australia's housing values have bottomed out, with CoreLogic's National Home Value Index having posted a second consecutive monthly rise. April's half a percent increase follows a 0.6% lift in March, leaving the Home Value Index 1% higher over the past three months. It's becoming more evident the housing market has moved through an inflection point after falling 9.1% between May 2022 and February of 2023. Not only are we seeing housing values stabilising or rising across most areas of the country, a number of other indicators are confirming the positive shift. Auction clearance rates are holding slightly above the long-run average, sentiment has lifted and home sales are trending around the previous five-year average. Sydney increased 1.3% in April and is leading the positive turn in housing conditions, with dwelling values rising each month since February. In further evidence that a positive growth trend has emerged, the four largest capital cities all recorded a rise in housing values over the rolling quarter. The more positive trend in housing values comes amid a worsening imbalance between supply and demand, with a significant lift in net overseas migration running headlong into a lack of housing supply. While overseas migration would normally have a more direct correlation with rental demand, with vacancy rates holding around 1% in most cities, it's reasonable to assume that more people are fast-tracking a purchasing decision simply because they can't find rental accommodation. On the supply side, many prospective vendors have stayed on the sidelines through the downturn, keeping inventory at below average levels and providing sellers with some leverage at the negotiation table. There's also the growing expectation that the rate hiking cycle is over, or nearly over, following the most rapid and significant cycle of interest rate hikes on record. A consensus view that interest rates have peaked amid a sharp drop in home values could be contributing to a broader perception that the housing market has bottomed out. If interest rates stabilise from here, there's a good chance consumer sentiment will improve, bolstering housing market activity from both a purchasing and a selling perspective. Notably, the trend towards more positive housing market conditions has occurred while interest rates remain well above average. The last time we saw housing values trending higher through a rising interest rate environment was during the mid to late 2000s, when the mining boom was underway. This period was also characterised by surging net overseas migration that contributed significantly to housing demand. The trend among regional markets is one of diversity. While values are generally stabilising or rising in most areas, regional New South Wales and regional Victoria were the only rest of state regions last month to record a fall in housing values. However, the quarterly trend indicates these regions are also on a clear trajectory towards a stabilisation in values. Persistently low levels of advertised supply is a key factor in supporting housing values. The flow of newly listed properties has held below the five-year average since September 2022, with a rolling four-week trend holding around 14% below the average for this time of the year towards the end of April. With a flow of new listings holding lower than normal, total advertised inventory was tracking nearly 22% below the previous five-year average for this time of the year. Advertised supply was well below average across every capital city over the four weeks ending April 23rd, apart from Hobart, where listing numbers have been rising, albeit from a low base. The flow of new listings is highly seasonal, typically trending lower through winter before rising into spring and early summer. At the moment, it looks like this seasonal trend is holding true, with the flow of new listings once again falling into winter. This will be an important trend to watch. As market conditions improve, we could see prospective vendors becoming more willing to test the market and beat the spring rush when competition among vendors is likely to be more apparent. While listings have trended lower, demand, based on the estimated number of home sales, looks to have stabilised. The rolling six-month trend in capital city home sales is tracking about 28.6% below the recent high, but it's held firm through the year to date. On a rolling quarterly basis, estimated capital city home sales were approximately 2.4% below the previous five-year average for this time of the year. If we see a further lift in consumer sentiment, there is a good chance housing activity will trend higher. This has certainly been the case historically, where measures of consumer sentiment and the number of dwelling sales have shown a high correlation. Adelaide dwelling values were up 0.2% in April, continuing a run of resilience despite the higher interest rate environment. In fact, Adelaide home values are only 2.4% below their peak in July last year. 
The market has been supported by persistently low stock levels, with advertised supply ending last month 42% below the five-year average for this time of the year, while sales activity tracked approximately 15% above the five-year average. Rental markets have also held tight, with vacancy rates the lowest of any capital city, recorded at just 0.4% in April. Overall, it's looking like the Australian housing market has moved through what's been a relatively short but sharp downturn. For combined capital city dwelling values, the 9.7% drop from the April 2022 peak to a trough in February this year was the second largest on record, as well as the steepest decline relative to previous downturns. The 10.2% value decline recorded through the 2017 to 2019 downturn was the largest drop since CoreLogic records began back in 1980. Typically, we wouldn't see housing values start a new growth cycle until monetary policy started to ease, or credit policies loosened, or some level of fiscal support was introduced. The shift towards more positive conditions has come about in the absence of these factors. The key drivers of this positive inflection seem to be the larger than expected rise in net overseas migration, which has created additional demand for housing at a time of extremely tight rental conditions and well below average levels of advertised supply. While the bottom of the downturn looks quite convincing, we aren't expecting housing values to rise materially until interest rates reduce, until credit policies ease, or if housing-focused stimulus is introduced, or potentially a combination of these factors. This scenario where interest rates fell and credit policy eased was exactly what occurred around the middle of 2019, following the federal election and a drop in interest rates that was shortly followed by an easing in APRA's serviceability assessment rules. This saw housing values trend higher before being interrupted by the onset of the global pandemic. While the outlook for housing is looking more positive, it's important to acknowledge some of the headwinds that are likely to dampen any material momentum building in this upswing. While interest rates have either peaked or are close to peaking, the cost of debt remains 130 basis points above the pre-COVID decade average against a backdrop of near record levels of household indebtedness. The combination of high cost of debt and high level of debt, as well as cost of living pressures, is likely to keep sentiment at below average levels, at least until interest rates start to come down. Although values have fallen, the housing market remains unaffordable for many. Even with a recent sharp drop in values, the median value of a capital city dwelling remains 12%, or roughly $83,000 higher than it was at the onset of COVID back in March of 2020. The dwelling value to income ratio was just under eight at the end of the September quarter last year, compared with a ratio of 7.2 at the onset of COVID. Serviceability costs have continued to rise, with approximately 42% of the median capital city household income required to service a new mortgage on the median value home in September last year, a figure that's expected to rise when updated data comes out later this month. Additionally, we're yet to see the full impact of the rapid rate hiking cycle flow through to household balance sheets. Arguably, the lag of rate hikes hitting the household sector will be longer than normal due to the larger portion of fixed rate borrowers who have, so far, been insulated from rate hikes. As more borrowers feel the impact of higher interest rates, it's likely we will see more evidence of distress, including a rise in mortgage arrears, albeit from record lows and potentially a lift in motivated listings. With labour markets expected to remain tight, the risk of distressed selling should be contained. Unemployment continues to track around generational lows, holding around the mid 3% range since June last year, compared with the pre-COVID decade average of 5.5%. Public and private sector forecasts have the unemployment rate rising, but remaining well below the decade average benchmark. The outlook for housing markets largely rests with the trajectory of interest rates. The timing of a rate cut remains highly uncertain. However, once we see rates coming down, that's when we could start to see some sustained momentum gather in housing markets. If you want to stay across all the twists and turns in the housing market, make sure you're checking out the research pages of the CoreLogic website.